San Francisco is surrounded on three sides by water. The fireboat station is integral to uh, maritime rescue and preparedness, not only for San Francisco, but for all of the Bay Area. Fire Station 35 uh, was built in 1915, so it's over 100 years old. And behind it, we are going to build Fireboat Station 35. So the city's capital planning committee, uh, I think about three years ago, um, issued a guidance that all city facilities must resist sea level rise. Fireboat Station number 35 construction cost is a, a, approximately $30 million and um, the, the schedule is a little bit complicated because uh, the, what we call a float um, is being fabricated uh, in China and will be brought to Treasure Island where the uh, building, actual fire station, will be constructed on top of it and then brought to Pier 22 and a half for installation. We are looking at uh, late 2020 for final completion of the fireboat float. The historic firehouse will remain on the Embarcadero. We will still respond out of the historic firehouse with our fire engine and respond to medical calls and uh, uh, other incidents in the district. The facility has to incorporate uh, between three to six feet of sea level rise over the next hundred years. That's what uh, the city's uh, guidance is required. Uh, it's built on a float that uh, can move up and down as the water level rises, and so it's on uh, four fixed guide piles. And um, so as the seas go up, it can it can move up and down uh, with the bay. It does have a full range of travel from low tide to high tide of about 16 feet. So that allows for current tidal movements plus several extra additional feet for sea level rise in the coming decades. The fireboat station float will also incorporate a ramp for ambulance uh, deployment and access. The access ramp uh, is rigidly connected to the land side, uh, or more of a pivot or hinge connection, uh, and then it's sliding over the top of the float. So in that way the ramp can, can you know, flex up and down like a hinge, but also allow for a little lap, slight, you know, few inches of lateral motion of the float. Both the access ramps, uh, which, of which there's two, and the utilities all need flexible connections when connecting from the float you know, back to the building. So uh, electrical power, water, sewage, it all has uh, flexible connections to the float. Fireboat station number 35 uh, will provide mooring for three fireboats and one fire rescue boat. Currently, we're staffed with approximately seven members per day but the fire department would like to um, establish a new dedicated marine unit that would be able to respond to multiple incidents. Uh, looking into the future, we have not only AT&T Park, where we have a lot of kayakers, but we also have a lot of developments in the southeast side, including the Warrior Stadium, and we want to have the ability to respond to um, any marine or maritime incident along all of these new developments. There's very few design references for people actually sleeping on the water. What we really look to were cruise ships, which are you know, larger structures, you know, several times the size of Fireboat Station 35, uh, but have you know, a lot of people, uh, a lot of sleeping, and, uh, but they're really the only good reference point. And so we look to the cruise ship industry that has um, kind of an index for you know, how much acceleration you know, they can accommodate. It's very unique. Um, I don't know about any other fire station built on the water uh, in the United States. The fireboat's a regional asset that can not only be used for water rescue and extinguishment of fires, but we also do environmental cleanup. We have a special rigging that we carry that will contain oil spills until um, an environmental unit can come out. This is a job for us, but it's also a way of life and a lifestyle. We're proud to serve our community and um, willing to help people in any way we can.